Hey there, for today I'm going to show you how to rotate objects using basic options and scripts and we're gonna have some fun using lever, trigger zones and items. I'm your host JB and this is my companion scripting wizard Mellow. Howdy! Now before I can start show you all of the fancy stuff we're going to need to have a wheel and I would like to have a wheel with no insight. There is a reason for that. Because when you work with rotations, you want to have the pivot point exactly in the middle. First thing we do is you're going to go to shapes, make sure it is selected on cylinder, then change the layout to this one right down here. Then click in an empty field, drag it until you have a nice wheel, just like that. And again, to have a layer of two. Then you might think you need to unselect these guys and have the pivot point still in the middle. When you click on place, escape, select it, you all of a sudden see that the pivot point is right down here at the side. What the editor always do is it place the pivot point at one of the stones. And in this case, we don't have a stone in the middle, so it's going to be troublesome. We need to do this on a different way. So I'm just going to delete this, try this again, click an empty field, drag it, something like right down here. I'm actually looking right down here that we don't have like an ugly overlap. Then just turn the floor back on, give it two layers like this, click and click on place. When you press escape and click on this again, you see that the pivot point of this group is right in the middle because we have a stone that is perfectly in the middle in order to make this happen. All we have to do right now is edit the group, then go to the side, make sure you select all the stones underneath, press on delete, select the ones on top, Control D to duplicate, make sure you got the grid on by pressing V, place it down, press escape, and now if we're gonna lock, it is still perfectly in the middle. Now we can put it sideways, so I'm gonna press spacebar, Put it like that, spacebar again, twice, and then move it up just like this. And also what I like in order to give it just a little bit more visibility on that it's actually rotating, I'm just going to do it like that. Then I know for sure when it's rotating, it's actually visible rotating. So now that is done, let's rotate this wheel. In order to do that, we need to go to this puzzle right down here, scripting tools. And then we have game logic and game logics are things that will not be visible in the game when you turn it on. And for this, you're going to need to have animation and then rotation. I could have typed rotation too. So in this case, let's place it down here. And what I mean is that this icon down here won't be visible. So right now you see a lot of options, but the first thing we need to do is make sure that the wheel is linked up with the animator. So we're going to click on the wheel and right down here it says animated. So once we select this one, it will open two of these guys because we have position animator and rotation animator, just like right down there. In this case, we want to rotate it. So click on this guy right down here and select the rotation animator. Now let's just put it on a test and see what happens. So we open this one right down here and click on animator test. And this is right now what happens. Now you also see that the pivot point is not in the middle of the wheels right down here. Let's make sure it's in the middle, even though we're not gonna use it. I just wanna show it to you in case you wanna do something different with this. So we're going to go to the side while the group is being selected you see here edit group pivot so click on this one make sure the grid is turned on and just move it once to the middle now if it doesn't show it perfectly in the middle that means that the stones are not on the grid perfectly so let's just enter and confirm this then let's go into edit group and make sure that the grid is on and now if we move it perfectly right down here it should be fine it is now perfect so doing stuff on the grid is very important not only for the animator but also for the pivot point that it gets the right rotation you want and so if we click on animator test 
you can now see it rotated perfectly around the pivot point. And as you can also see, it doesn't completely rotate. That is because in the animator options, we have a lot of stuff. It is actually showing that the angle is 90 degrees. So if we want it to be completely rotated, we can or either put it to the right or the left. What is right and left? I will show you that in a second. Let's first take care that it rotates like this rather than what it just did. So in this case, we're going to change the Y. We're going to put it on zero. And then we're going to put the Z on one. And then if we click on animator test, you can now see it rotates in the right direction. And now I can perfectly show you what this does. If you put this to the right side, it will rotate like that. If we would put this to the left side, it will rotate like that, if I'm not wrong. Very good. Now it rotated very fast. That is because right down here we have an option that says time. The time is set to one second. So in the one second, it will rotate all the way. We can also change this to speed to get a little bit more precision of the rotating speed. So in this case, it goes very slow. We can increase the speed in this case. I'm going to say how about 100 in this case. Speed goes 100. But what I would like to do is I would like it to keep rotating. So in this case, what we can do here is we have here loop. We want to change it to repeat, but let me show you what ping pong does. If I click on ping pong and play the animation, you can see that at some point it will just turn around. So let's set it on repeat. Play it again, and it's, as you can see right now, it will just keep continuing. Now there is also another option. Let's say you want to start it slowly and then end it slowly and start it slowly. Then right down here we have smoothing. If you keep smoothing on this side, it will just, you know, go smooth. If you put it all the way down here, and you know what? I'm just going to put it faster because... Ain't nobody got time for that. You can see that it slowly stops, slowly speeds up again at the point where it starts and ends. So there is still a loop, only it slows down and speeds up. In this case, we're going to keep it like that. Now, of course, there is also a few couple of other options, but in this case, that is for now not important. There is still one thing though that is very important. Sometimes you want to have it and sometimes you don't want to have it. So let's say you're making a mystery island with a windmill. And of course, when you reach the island, you want the windmill to already turn around. But what if the mission is to turn on the windmill? Then you need to make sure that enabled is turned off because when we play it right now, nothing happens until you say to the animator do something which is in this case also a script but that doesn't work so this was basically step one how to rotate what kind of rotations are there smooth not smooth ping pong and that kind of stuff now in this case i'm gonna go back to this and hit it tool i'm going to select recolor I'm going to make this black because this was a, a very easy one and I want to keep red for a little bit more difficult type of deal. Now normally I would say once you need to learn stuff you need to redo the animation, redo the scripting. But in order to just save time I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to press Ctrl D, copy it and place it right down here just to save us some time on the tutorial. Also, in this case, I'm going to make this one green because this one is an easy one. Now, before continuing, I think it is very important to give everything names so you won't be confused with all of the names when we actually going to work with scripting. And I'm going to give you a tip, which I let you know later on. But for now, I'm going to call this ring one. And I'm going to call this row n. So rotation animator one. This one will be ring two. And this one will be row n two. 
In this case, we are going to control the ring by using a lever. So we're going to turn it on and we're going to turn it off. So the first thing that we will have to do in this case, make sure that it's not enabled or else it will start rotating even though we didn't press any levers. So let's go to the Antilles. I'm sorry if I pronounce it the wrong way. I can help it. But let's go to search and in this case we're going to use a lever and we're going to place the lever like that right down here and I also got something to explain about the lever. In this case we need to make sure that the lever interacts with the animation so we are going to add our first official script right down here so let's add a script. Now I have already explained in the introduction, everything has events which you want to interact with. There is a lot of stuff, but in this case we want to just switch it on and switch it off. So we're going to use these guys right down here, switch on and switch off. What do we want to switch on and switch off? We want to switch on and off the animation or with other words we want to enable the animation that is what it's called in here so we're gonna type enable and we're going to need to have this guy right down here set enable game logic true now game logic what you see right down here are actually all the things that are shown right down here in the list so let's take this guy right down here and let's place this guy right down here now you see it is purple, but if you would go here in the list, you see a lot of stuff and here are some more stuff. So the best thing to do is try to remember what you're going to need to use and then just type it in here. Now what we need to do here is we need to select our game logic. In this case, we could open this one and this is the reason why I made this name a lot shorter or else it will be maybe too long in some cases. In this case, we need to have the animation number two and we leave this on true. Thanks to a tip of Jacobs, we're just gonna hold control, click on this one and drag it right down here. So it is duplicated without using control C and control V. And we need to set this on false. Now true and false in the editor can mean a lot of things. In this case, it could mean on and off sometimes yes and no and in some other cases it works completely different but for this simple script right down here it is just on and off so now we can close the script we could take our spawn point i'm just going to move it right down here and turn it around so when we test it we have quick access to it we don't have to walk all the way to it and this will save us some time so now if i pull the switch it is turned on. If I pull the switch again, it is turned off. Then let's press escape, leave game and return to the editor. Now, before I said something about, I want to show you something with the lever because when there is a case that the ring already needs to rotate by turning it enabled on in the animator, then we would test the game. Then you will see that when I pull the lever, nothing happens. That is that the lever is already turned off. And now when we switched it, it's turned on. So now if I do it again, it turns it off. Or with other words, the switch is always turned off. We need to set it to turn on because the ring is by default already turned on in this case. So when you select your lever, simply select on for the lever. So you can also see that it switches. So the lever is on, the ring is turned on with the enabled animation. So now if I switch the lever, it will stop instant. And when we switch it again, it is rotating. For the next step, we are going to use a trigger zone. So in this case, I'm going to select the ring. Alt control also select the animator, then shift D, make sure you can move it off site just like that. Make sure the grid is turned on by pressing V and place it right down there. First things first, let's click on the ring, change two to three, change the animator to three. Then let's go to the puzzle, game logic, and right down here, type in trigger. With the trigger zone, I'm going to show you a few couple of examples. 
click on it and then drag it right down here. The arrow doesn't matter where it goes. In this case, for quick testing, I'm going to move my character and I'm going to move it a little bit backwards. Now, before I'm going to show you how to make an object interact with a trigger zone, I first would like to show you with a character that can interact with a trigger zone. So let's click on the trigger zone. And once again, you see a few couple of options. The first option right down here is a sphere. You can see it looks like a sphere. Then open this, you can change it into a capsule, which is perfect for a character to fit in. Or when you work with items, you can select block and it will change into a block. Now, one of the things that is different with these trigger zones and maybe some couple of other things that if you press spacebar and then again, you have a new thing going on down here. This is it actually to make it bigger, larger, smaller and that kind of things. But let's put it back on a capsule. And what you can also see right down here is visible. So that means that if we would run the game, that the bubble here is actually not visible. In order to make it look visible, so you know where to go, we click on visible. Now, if there is a chance that you don't like it white, and you would open this and select blue for an example, you click on confirm, then you're like, hey, it is invisible. Is that a bug? No. What you need to do here is you need to mess around with the alpha or in this case it will show you the transparency the only reason why the white one did show up is because by default it makes it white and turns it on to 55 so if we now confirm it our bubble is visible again another option you see down here this trigger zone is triggered by any player if you open this up you can see there is a whole big list with all kinds of things that can interact with the trigger zone. For now, we just leave it on player just to show you that, you know, you can do stuff with the player. All right, since this is the first thing we interact with, we need to add a script. This basically works the same as the lever, only things are called different. So let's go to events. In here it says on trigger enter, on trigger exit. We need to go uh, actually to game logics, but I just like to type it in here. Set enable game logic, just like how we did it before. Select this one and this time we use number three. Then hold control, click on here and drag it at the same time and place it right down there. Don't forget, we want to turn it off. So we set it on false. Let's get out of here and let's test this. And as you can see, it is still rotating. That's because I forgot to turn off rotation at the start. Very good. So if something is wrong, just make sure you check out everything. In this case, it is super simple to solve this. And now if we walk into the trigger zone, it is activated and we walk out of this, it is deactivated. And this is something you can do with a lot of fun stuff. And there are two things that I'm going to change. First of all, I'm going to put the speed of this guy back to 100 because we don't need to see it completely rotate around. And just for the sake of it, I'm just going to turn it off. And then there is one thing I forgot. This is something that I wanted to explain at the beginning, but I needed an example. This trigger zone, we're going to give this not a 1 because it's the first one. We're going to give it a 3. The reason why I'm going to give it a 3 is because it's very nice to have all of the items that are working together to give them the same numbers. So we always know number 3 belongs with this selection. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to entities and then we're going to type in cog. We're going to select this guy and I like to work on grid and I'm just placing it down here. Now, how do we interact with this? Well, we select the trigger zone, then we change any player to entity type. Now, there is also item. I'm not quite sure what an item is, if this isn't an item. So let's select this one right down here. And then you're going to get one of these guys again. Click on it, select the cogwheel. And now let's test it out. All right, let's pick up the cogwheel. And let's press V so we can place it right down in here. And as you can see, it is now rotating. 
And if we take it out, it actually stops. And of course, one of the things that I should have been doing is change capsule to block just because, you know, it is unnecessary to have it this high. We could have also placed a table and move it up. It is all to your imagination what you would like to do for a mystery island or for a mini game. And I'm just going to paint this orange because not that it was too much difficult from that one but just because I like to do that. The last step is gonna be a little bit more complicated because in this case, what I would like to do is have the trigger zone, the lever, the cogwheel, the animation and the wheel all interact together. Or with other words, if we would pull the lever, then it doesn't work because we first need to put the cogwheel into here and then we can pull the lever and make it work. So in this case, let's select all of these guys, let's duplicate it, make sure the grid is turned on and move it right down here and or I'm going to select this guy, I'm going to also duplicate it and move it right down here. All right, I gave everything a name with a four on the end. I painted it red and or what I also did just for the sake of it, I deleted everything that is below the event. So it is nice and clean. Now let's start messing around with the lever first. So the first thing we're going to need is this logical thing right down here. Now this will take care that if it works, it will turn this one on. If it doesn't work, it will not turn on. And we can even add something extra that the game will tell us, hey, you're going to need a cogwheel in order to make it work. So in this case, we're going to need to have, again, this set enable game logic. We're gonna place it right down here. We're going to select our game logic, which is for some reason not done correct. <laughs> So now we can put it on animation 4, we're going to keep it on through. Now what we're also going to need to do is modify this guy right down here. So we're going to delete this one, we're going to delete that one. What we're going to need to do is put this one right down in there. So I'm going to hold control, click and select and put it right down there. So if the trigger zone is correct so the cogwheel is in it then it will be true then true is equal to true and that is true then it will go to this guy and activate the switch if the trigger zone is not correct then it will be false and false is not equal to true so it will skip this guy and move on to the next one and which is the cogwheel is missing I think that is the best way how to explain this. But we also going to need to have this guy right down in here. So what we can do is I believe right mouse button. No, left mouse button. We need to add one and then remove this one at the same time. That is just how it works. I can help it. So in this case, once again, hold control, put this one right down in here. We're going to make something later on and it will make sense uh, what it will do. Also hold control, move this guy right down in here because if something is wrong, the animation is not allowed to work. And we're also going to have this guy right down in here and put it on false. So once we switch it off, this will say no and turn it off. So for now, this is enough. We need to do the same thing over to the other side. So I'm just going to show you it again. And then we're going to add variables and we're going to give them color so you understand exactly what is going on. So once again, game logic, place it down here, left mouse button, add in another one, put it away. So we have this guy, remove that, remove that. Click on enable, it is very nice, it's still there. And take this guy, put it in here, select once again the animation, keep that on through, hold control, click and drag, put it right down here. Then still with control, we're going to click and drag this one right down here. And we're going to do the same thing with this guy and once again right down here. Put this on false, also make sure to put this one on false. 
And then we have the basic, just like the lever right down here for the trigger zone. And now the thing will come. We're going to need to work with variables. And I'm glad Melo actually explained me at the last second that we need to colorize this so it's easier to recognize what we are doing down here. So let's click on create new variable and let's call this variable. In this case, we are in the uh, trigger zone. Let's call this trigger zone number four, very important. And we're gonna give this our own color. In this case, I would like to use for this one, something like that, Night like right color, confirm. Now there are a few couple of other things. This only means that what we are making down here, if I click on confirm, it will be shown in the trigger zone. But if I would go to the lever where we also going to need it, it won't be shown up. That is what this means. This means only at the um, place where you have made this. So in this case, we can still change it. It is right down in here, so we can change this. If we would change this to global and this one to global, the reason why there are two is because there are two of these things. The next thing we have to do is make use of a boolean. Boolean is true and false to kind of say. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I am used to Blender and a boolean in Blender is a different type of deal slash ish. Just make sure it's from boolean. So then you confirm this one. And all we are going to need for this trigger zone is to use this guy. If we're gonna place this guy right down in here, hold control and put it right down here. And when you deselect the color should change. All right, so what I'm gonna explain you now is that this guy is the same as this guy, only this guy, we need to use that at the lever. And you can also see that by doing this, you see that is what we just had. All right, let's do the same <laughs> at the lever. So edit script, and this is something you don't always have to do. So keep that in mind. It might look like a lot of work, but that's not always the case. So we're gonna call this lever four, just because it's project number four. We're gonna put it in global, we, because we want to make sure that we can have this at our trigger zone. In this case, I'm gonna make it yellow, and I need to turn on boolean, and then, Confirm. In this case, we do the same. We're going to use this one for our lever. Hold Control, click, drag, and place this down here. Now we have these two guys, right? These two guys are for the trigger zone ones. So this is how the lever and the trigger zone are communicating with each other. Also place this down here. And that's why giving it different colors so it is better to understand. Thank you, Melo. So let's go to this one again, edit script, and let's do the same. But in this case, we need to have the lever and put the lever in here and in there. Now, there might be still one thing missing, and I will show to you what will happen now, and I will show you how to add it, but. We need to add one more thing, which I try to understand what it exactly means, but yeah. So in this case, we do this and it doesn't work. And that's why we need to add one more thing. So let's go back. So if, if you have this, then don't worry. You have copied everything perfectly like I did. You're just missing one thing and it's actually easy to forget. So what we need to do at the trigger zone is we're gonna need to add one more event and this event is on create. On game start means that things will create when the game starts, or in this case, the scripting. This means when it will only create when the actual pieces will be created. It's I still need to kind of understand this, but that's just how it works. So in this case, the only thing we, there is left to do is we have to hold control, copy this one here. What I think it does is when it's creating the scripts, the items and whatever not, it will tell the game the trigger zone is not working, something like that. So now we can test this and I hope for the love of God <laughs> that if I do this, 
that it should work. So in this case, it didn't work. And I can, you know, redo this whole lesson, but I'm just going to show you guys the truth that if there is something wrong, you're going to need to figure out what is wrong. So the way to do this, this needs to be true. This needs to be false. So in this case, I forgot to put this one on false. And let's check out some other stuff. This needs to be true so it can move on. This needs to be false. This one is also wrong because it needs to be false. So there we go. I should have just checked out everything before uh, playing. Also, this guy needs to be on false because that means turn off. This needs to be on true. This needs to be on false, just like that one. So many mistakes, but you know, that is reality. So everything should be fine. Also, the animation is en not enabled, so it doesn't work. All right, it should work right now. Yep. Oh, it it's doesn't work, so that is good. So in this case, let's make it work. Let's pick up the cogwheel. Let's place it in here. It's spinning and then it's turned off, turned on. The reason why it instantly spin is because I think I forgot to put the switch on off instead of on. That is what we did right there. We started it with the switch on. That's why it instantly spins. All right. So in this case, let's click the lever and make sure that it not turn on by default and or let's add in something extra so let's go to edit script then let's go to the search bar and type in console and let's take this guy right down here and place it right down here why do we want to have it right down here well because if we would trigger the switch and the cogwheel is not in the trigger zone that means that this is a false false and true is not equal so it is false that means it will skip this guy and move on to this guy the trigger zone is false false is equal to false so that is true so it moves on to this guy and since this guy is false it doesn't work it will say something is missing so that means if we would pull the switch it is saying in the console, something is missing. I'm so glad that it worked out. All right, so uh, let's put this in here. And now if we pull the lever, it doesn't say anything and just turns on. So for the people that watches this video in the very far future, you have to understand that I started this whole scripting stuff like two weeks ago. And this guy is the one I was struggling the most because I needed to understand how this works. And I think today I actually understand it more than ever how I actually tried to explain it to you guys. It makes more sense to me too. But I, in the end, learned everything from Melo and I learned a few couple of things from the developer and some other people tried to help out. These scripting tutorials need to be made and someone has to do it. So in this case, I hope you guys understand what I did. For the people that know more about this scripting and I missed something like a hotkey or something, let me know down below in the comment section. I will put your comment up on top and make sure that everyone will see it and in the next tutorial we are going to mess around with lights now of course this doesn't mean that i have shown you everything about the rotation because if you look at the guy behind me there is a lot more stuff you can do with rotation there will be a lot more of these tutorials coming up with all kinds of stuff and things for you to learn in order to make your own mystery island for the competition or make your own cool mini game. I want to thank Mello for his time and of course patience. So if you guys want to give him some support or you would like to check out what kind of a crazy mad scripting scientist he is, make sure you check out his channel because the stuff he does with the editor is just out of this planet. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. That was good, right? Man, he's always so silenced.